Hey guys, so last week I promised you guys that this week I was gonna be testing the Mead 127 F9.3 refractor, testing it, and then the week after would be testing it against the Maksutov. Just changing, I'm gonna be doing the Takahashi Sky 90 first, a few videos, and then we're gonna go back and proceed with the testing of the Acromat. So bear with me, gonna change the scheduling a bit, Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. Your best friend, science, astronomy, and telescopes. And I have something here to show you that's very special. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so I met a lady today by the name of Sue. She had a little bit of a sad story. It used to be her brother's telescope, Dave, and he passed away. So she was selling his stuff off on his behalf. I made her a promise that I would dedicate this telescope and this video not just this video, but I'll probably make, I would say, at least a few videos on this, maybe three, uh, to her brother Dave, who owned this beautiful scope. And I wanted to talk about it first for you guys that have never seen one, own one. So let's talk about it. Now, this always intrigued me. It's a Takahashi Sky 90. So it's a 90 millimeter obviously made by Takahashi, which is a Japanese company that makes nice refractors. Now, this is not one of their higher end triplets or that type of thing. Um, it's a 90 millimeter, 500 millimeter focal length. Let's take a look at that glass here. It looks like Dave took very good care of it. it has the traditional lime green uh, clamshell and it's about almost nine pounds for this guy now the clamshell is very heavy on this there we go the front cap is like the manhole cover it does the job it's made out of metal and it has a sliding cap so it is very short as you see so what this was made for is if you love doing bird watching, animal viewing, uh, land viewing. You could even do city-wide scape viewing. This is like perfect. It gives you that nice high-end quality and sharpness. Um, so if you live out in the country, if you live on the lake somewhere, this is perfect for that. But it could also do astronomy. A lot of you guys are familiar with like the 80 millimeter short tube a refractor the 102 short tube refractor in fact I have the 102 here let me go show it to you now here is the 4 inch refractor the short tube version and this is also what they make for wide field viewing and low power kind of like a binocular view with one eye now of course this is nowhere near the quality of this and they also have the 80 millimeter version but I wanted to show you what a 102 millimeter version is and if we align the focus parts together, as you can see, it's still considerably shorter. They do have an 80 millimeter version and a 102 millimeter version. The Takahashi Sky 90 is right in the middle being 90 millimeters. Let's put this away. Again, would be great for daytime viewing or if you want to do wide field viewing of the night sky. But also one more thing. This would be perfect to go in an airplane. I mean, nine pounds is not so light, but you're getting a small package. And being that the, the cap slides down, makes it a little bit more portable. Now, Angelus did ask me, why don't I bring this down to Mexico and do some of the testing down there instead of waiting till we get back and do some of the testing. So I got to think about it because it's gonna to have to go on as my carry-on. So I already have my knapsack 
and my large luggage, I'm gonna be carrying in three things. And this is gonna have to go on the carry-on. So I'm gonna have to pad it very uh, carefully. So I am going to think about it. I'm not sure if I wanna bring two telescopes uh, or I can just test this one when I get back. So I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, back to this guy. So again, 90 millimeter F 500 millimeter focal length. So it's very short. Anything Takahashi is not light. That's why for this size, it's a little heavy. It does have a thumb screw here. Uh, that way you can put the tension on it. I have seen older telescopes that don't have that. And then over time, the felt compresses and then it just slides like that. But here, you can at least tighten it. The focuser is your traditional Takahashi quality focuser. Nice aluminum knobs. It's their standard, uh, I believe it's a 2.7 inch uh, focuser. It's very smooth. It is not, you know, Takahashi does not make a dual speed. You would have to upgrade it. I wish they would introduce, you know, a dual speed uh, for these or just make them with a dual speed. I think a lot of people would get them or get them even more because sometimes the upgrades of these could cost you another three, four hundred dollars. It does have your big thumb screw here to tighten down the focus or put more tension. It, it is slotted here. So you can put like the Takahashi six by uh, 30 finder. They got a seven by 50 finder. If you would need anything bigger uh, or you can put an aftermarket finder scope here. Right now it is a two inch uh, the draw tube here so you can put a nice two inch uh, on here and get really expanse wide field of view with a two inch eyepiece as well so that is definitely nice when you're looking at the milky way andromeda galaxy and some of those big extended stuff so i've always thought of maybe getting one of these guys here but it is a little bit expensive for a 90 millimeter telescope but Anything Takahashi is definitely nice quality. I mean, in Canada, they're kind of hard to find, you know, especially on the used market. You can find them in the U.S. a lot easier. Um, I believe they are discontinued. I don't believe they make the Sky 90 anymore. And I think it's because, you know, they say there's a little bit of color fringing or false color on this telescope because it's so short. So even though it's a, it is a doublet and it's a fluorite doublet, but what they say, this is equivalent roughly to like a 90 millimeter F10. So if this is 500 millimeter focal length, this would be equivalent to one that's double the size, like a, an F10. So that's pretty actually good for, you know, cause as you guys know, the shorter you make, the telescope, the more high quality that lens has to be, or it might have to be like a triplet lens, unless portability is your number one thing. If portability is your number one thing and you still want some decent quality, this is way better than one of these Acromats, the 80 millimeter. I think SV Boney has a 90 millimeter or this 102. This will actually correct it yeah, again, if it was like an F10. So to have the quality of an F10 in an F5 type of format is really good. Now, again, that's, a, that's about it. So I've never really seen too many of these for sale on the used market. So normally, if I found this uh, somewhere else and I bought it, this video probably would have came out in another one to two months because I already have an order on my channel of what videos are coming out. I'm going to put this video out a bit sooner. And uh, let's go test this guy on, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, the moon. Uh, Venus is still, I think, a little bit too low for my liking, but why not? I will have to put a Vixen bar underneath here. And then maybe for quick daytime viewing, I might just put it on my SV Boney 225AZ mount. And then we could just start, I'll show you guys a little bit of the daytime stuff just so we can kind of see how it is. Uh, that's really it guys. Now, oh, one more final thing. So I believe by the serial code, it's, correct me if you guys know the 
manufacturing date better than me, but it is 11001. So I believe that means it's made in 2001 on the 11th month, November 2001. So again, it's not a brand new telescope. It is, uh, well, if, if that's correct, you guys tell me if you agree, then it's about a 23 year old telescope. But the nice thing is with refractors, as long as you maintain it very nicely, it can last a lifetime. So here we go. So here's a Takashi Sky 90. Let's go test it out and I'll tell you what I think. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. If you know anybody getting into hobby or if anybody on the forums is asking about this telescope, please share my channel with them. And I do have members videos where once a month I put a video just for the members that does not go on the live channel. And it's only 99 cents, one cup of coffee once a month, and you get to see something you won't see. And that's it. Why not you? Why not me?